Good morning, everybody. I'm Dr. Frank Zamalin, and we want to welcome you to Awakening Way Spiritual Community. Awakening Ways is a new thought spiritual community in the, in the lineage of Dr. Ernest Holmes. It, we're a community that believes in, a, in, a, in the golden thread of truth and love that winds its way through all great spiritual traditions. And it's that thread that teaches us that awakening means becoming aware of the divinity within us. For that which is divine in the universe is the divine in all living things, including us. Knowing that, becoming aware of that means that we, we can take control of our lives in a new way through prayer and meditation and through connecting with that awareness within us, that divinity within us, we can change our lives for the better in oh so many ways. Here at Awakening Way Spiritual Community, our job is to help you to awaken to that within yourself. And we do that through classes in good times when we're not under COVID restrictions, uh, classes, meditations, uh, workshops, we do that through Sunday talks like today, uplifting and, and enlightening Sunday talks with wonderful music provided by our musicians. And, and, and we do that through prayer and one-to-one -one spiritual counseling. All of these we make available to you to help you to awaken to your higher self, to that divinity within you. We all come here by different paths. Some of us came from a Christian path, some from a Jewish path, some from no path at all. But whatever path we came here from, for right now, for this sacred moment in time, we're here, we're together to hear something that we need to hear. So right now, for this blessed moment, welcome home. We've been waiting for you. Today is the day nine of uh, the season for nonviolence. And um, I, I've noticed that a, a lot of people aren't, haven't looked at the season for nonviolence stuff. So you're not, you're not clear, you're not aware of what it is. So I wanted to share with you today's reading so that you, it, something might trigger in you that you want to become involved in, 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 in this program. So today is day nine. Gandhi said, I'm but a poor struggling soul yearning to be wholly good, wholly truthful, and wholly nonviolent in thought, word, and deed, but ever failing to reach the ideal which I know to be true. It's a painful climb, but each step upwards makes me feel stronger and fit for the next. The path of nonviolence is the path of personal healing. Gandhi is reminding us that being wholly good, wholly truthful, and wholly nonviolent is a goal and a path. It is not our present reality. Whatever work done on the outside is always doomed to failure if we're not simultaneously doing the work on the inside. How often in the past have many of us become involved in movements dedicated to forms of peace, only to see it degenerate into spates of, of, of juvenile anger, uh, at rage, at stalled progress, resistance, or disagreement. In my own past work with peace movements, I've seen people smashing cars, breaking windows as part of their protest. Such a consciousness not only destroys all the work done, it violates the original intention of nonviolence and of peace. He also reminds us not to despair, even when the climb up to that higher consciousness is painful. When we focus on doing both the inner and outer work of nonviolence, we will always make progress toward the ideal that we have not yet achieved. Each step we take will allow us to feel more accepting, more loving, and more able to think and act in a manner that is better, more truthful, and more nonviolent. 
It must either come first or as part of the work of nonviolence in the world. The affirmative practices, today I will meditate on how my thoughts, words, and deeds contradict my desire for nonviolence. Today I will observe my thoughts, my words, and deeds, and where they are violent, I will find my place of peace, a place of fear that caused them, beginning the process of healing. This is the path of nonviolence. With that, join me for just a moment, if you will. And know that as we enter into this month of harmony, that the divine is here with us in this, through us. And as, as we begin this gathering this morning, that divine energy is part of absolutely everything that happens. For each of us is the divine in human form in human cloaking. Each breath we take is the divine animating us and leading us forward. Each thought that occurs, each word that is spoken is the divine speaking. In that truth, I know for Reverend Terry that she is the divine in this moment. She is the divine being carried forward to speak and know the truth and to enlighten and uplift each of us. I know for the musicians that they sing those divine harmonies, those harmonies of the Most High, carrying each of them along and carrying us with them into that higher realm oh, of divine harmonies. I know that all of us here today come together in, in the spirit of love and of harmony. And that when we leave here today, we will take it with us. For that is the lesson we will have learned today. I know that this is true. I give thanks for it. And knowing that it is already the truth of this morning, I release this and let it go and say, and so it is. Amen.
golden glowing, healing, flowing, God's golden light on me. It is beautiful, all、oh, so beautiful. Life is beautiful. Beautifully divine, it's so beautiful. It's so beautiful. Life is beautiful. Beautifully. Simple pleasures, simple treasures. God's golden light on me. Golden, glowing, healing, flowing. God's golden light on me. God's golden light on you. Namaste. The light and love of the divine in me honors and greets the light and love of the divine in in each and every one of you here this morning. Big thank you this morning to Jimmy. Beautiful song, his own composition, and it's as always so beautifully heartfelt. And thank you. Dr. Frank, for that great reminder of who and what we are. So、uh, Frank did mention that. I'm sorry, I got to get myself together.、Um, <clears throat> that harmony is our seed of awakening for for this month. Harmony is defined as a consistent, orderly, or pleasing arrangement of parts, congruity. So. When we are in harmony, we are in alignment, and you know we are poised, we are centered. When we are in harmony, we are more available to experience the presence of the divine right where we are. This is just just logical. We can have harmony in music. We can have harmony in relationships. We can see harmony out in nature. <clears throat> But Marcus Aurelius said this: "He who lives in harmony with himself lives in harmony with the universe." And so, first we begin with ourselves, don't we? We begin with ourselves. And I, I want to remind everybody that when we talk about harmony, we have to include a few other attributes. We have to include the idea of balance and and the idea of equilibrium,、uh, maybe. Peace in there. Harmony includes all of these things, right?、Uh, and, and yet, when we think about what Marcus Aurelius was saying, we want to turn for this morning. We want to turn that, looking at harmony, focusing on ourselves.、Um, <clears throat> it is. Well, have you ever been out of harmony? Let me just ask that. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, we definitely know when we're out of harmony, and this concept of balance plays an integral role in harmony. So when we're out of balance, and you know, I'm not talking about balancing your diet, balancing your checkbook, you know, making sure that you're exercising.、Uh, not, not, you know, no, not we're not talking about a balanced lifestyle and all of that. We're talking about balancing and harmonizing. Those inner areas of our being that just kind of drift in and out of harmony all day long. So let's just review what those what those pieces of ourselves are. What we know 
is that as humans, we function on a mental, emotional, physical, and spiritual plane. This is who we are, mind, heart, body, and soul. And so when we are out of harmony, when we are out of harmony with our physical bodies, let's say, when we are um, out of balance, we know we're out of balance because we feel weak or we feel sick or we feel tired, uh, we feel uncomfortable. All of these things that respond in our bodies when we are out of alignment, when we're out of harmony. We definitely know we're out of balance in our bodies when we try to stand up and we have to sit back down because we're dizzy, right? That's a sure sign there's something off with our harmony and balance. Um, when we're not in harmony emotionally, our hearts start to close down. The heart starts to tighten up and become constricted and we start feeling irritated and agitated and we're cranky. Um, we're not feeling kind and generous and loving. This is a sign that, that we're out of balance. We are out of harmony in the heart. When we're out of harmony mentally, boy, I can relate to this, we can't focus. <clears throat> it's really difficult to focus. Um, we're consumed by negativity or we're, we're spending most of our time thinking about the past and all of those memories and all of that, that all of those things that take us away from where we are now. And experiencing a lack of harmony spiritually means that we feel a sense of disconnect. We're disconnected with ourselves. We're disconnected with the presence of the divine. Uh, we're we're uh, feeling like our life has no purpose. It has no meaning. So these are the four areas. And, and knowing that they're the four areas, I just want to remind you that we are a unified system, right? We have these parts, but we're still a unified system. And we are an individualized unified system in the great unified system, the divine, which is a wholeness, a unified system in and of itself. And so we need to remember that when we are out of balance or we are out of harmony with even one area in our life, it can throw us off in all the other areas as well. Um, I, I, I thought about this, you know, if you're, if you're feeling stressed mentally, emotionally, you're, you're just raw. Emotionally, you're just, you're frazzled, right? And if you're if you're stressed and you're frazzled, you're probably not gonna feel very spiritually minded. You're not gonna feel very connected to the divine in that moment. And the longer we continue being in that state, the more likely we are to have something go sideways with our physical health, right? These are the times when we become vulnerable to like catching a cold or or you know, stubbing our toe, something like this. So everything is related. And when we look at this, we need to remember that it's like this, this balancing act that we have to do. When we look at, at harmony, it is, a, it is a dance between what pushes us forward and what pulls us back. It's this constant push, pull, push, pull, action. And that's what life is all about, isn't it? Kind of dancing, dancing between this push and pull, push and pull. This is how life unfolds on a daily basis for all of us. And we are either able to dance, you know, a nice smooth dance through these experiences, through these senses, these opposites really, or we rally against them and we find something wrong with them. I, I came across, a, maybe you're familiar with this, it was a, uh, an experiment that was um, done back in the 80s. And it, it took place in the desert. And what it was, was 
bunch of scientists got together, environmentalists really, um, and they got together and they created this huge glass dome out in the desert. And this was uh, environmentally perfect. You know, everything was filtered air, filtered water, filtered everything. It was designed to create the perfect atmosphere for plants and animals and people to live. Everything that was in this dome was expected to thrive and to just blossom and grow uh, beyond belief. Well, it was, for the most part, it was very successful. <clears throat> People lived in this glass dome for months at a time. They loved it. Uh, the plants did, did well, the animals and insects were doing well, all except for the trees. And the scientists would plant trees and they would do well. They would grow, they would grow until they reached a certain height. <clears throat> and then they just topple over. <clears throat> no one could figure out what the story was. They could not figure out what was wrong. Well, eventually they came to a realization <clears throat> that what these trees needed, this glass dome was not providing because what the trees needed was wind. The trees needed to have wind because without wind, the trees were not able to allow their roots to grow deeper into the ground because with the wind blowing on them, the trees naturally deepen into the ground, deepen into the earth. And they begin, they, that's how they learn to grow strong and tall and, and how they're able to be able to stand up to their own weight because of the resistance of the wind. And so what the scientists discovered was in their attempt to make this dome perfect, they neglected to add something that, was, that would have allowed these trees to come into the fulfillment of their natural growth. Well, I thought this was a really important lesson because how often do we look at our own lives and, and complain about our hardships or things that have happened in our past, maybe even what's going on you know, in our lives currently? And we need to take a step back maybe, not, not be uh, quite so hasty in deciding that what is happening is necessarily a bad thing. Because I don't know about you, but I look back on my past and see times of turmoil. And as I look at it and see how I have come out of that turmoil, I know that I have grown stronger as a result of those tumultuous experiences. I'm sure that's, that's true for you too. So it's important when we look at the, um, how life unfolds for us, that we not throw out necessarily everything that we deem as being not good. And yet we still have to deal with this constant, this, this world, this universe, it seems of opposites opposites. And, you know, it feels like how we learn to maneuver this is our life, our life's work. And, and in fact, I, I, I really think it is. And where do we begin? Well, <clears throat> you know, I got up this morning and I started thinking about what, what, what was like the first, one of the first things I thought of when I woke up this morning. Okay. I have to get out of bed and I don't want to get out of bed. I have to get out and I don't want to. I need to, but I don't want to. I mean, <clears throat> this is how everything goes all day long. Um, I need to eat, but I'm not hungry. I need to eat, but I'm not hungry. Uh, this world of opposites that just continually bombard us day in and day out. What we need to do, though, is take a lesson from the biodome. 
we need to recognize and realize that maybe what we need to do is find a way to discover what it is that's making us weak, that's making us topple over. You know, what is it that's making me unhappy about getting up? Well, what was making me unhappy about getting up was that I didn't go to bed until really late last night. Well, okay, duh. You know, <laughs> that's the reason. Okay, there's there's no point in fighting against that. So we have to do like we teach here in this community. We have to turn to ourselves, to our thoughts, to what it is that we're thinking and become aware of where we are. You know, we're talking about harmony. And we're talking about opposites. So when we start looking at our thoughts and what we're thinking, take a look and see what, what pair of opposites am I, am I dealing with right now? What, where is my head right now? With that awareness, we're, we're, we're miles ahead in, in learning how to deal with dancing with these opposites, yeah? Then we need to remember from the biodome, we need to remember where we stand. Where, where are we strong? Where are we weak? You know, if we try to stand all day on one leg, we're not going to be very balanced. We're not going to we're not going to be living a very harmonious life because we're going to be weak and unable to move through our day. So we need to think about what it is that gives us strength and what gives us strength is remembering always that we're always rooted in God. This is the truth. This is what we teach here. We're always rooted in the divine. And the more we can remember that and the more we can return to that and the more we can center, align and deepen ourselves into that soil of the truth of the divine in us and as us, the stronger we will be and the more easily we will be able to deal with any kind of anger or fear or loss that comes into our lives because we will have done the work to anchor ourselves, to ground ourselves, to root ourselves in that soil of the power and presence of the divine. This is good news. This helps us move through our days in dealing with the world of opposites. The other thought that came to mind is thinking about gymnasts, you know, I don't know how they do what they do with their bodies. It's a it's a mystery to me. Even when I was young, I mean, no, what they do with their bodies is astounding. And you know, one of the the things that they do is they walk on that balance beam, that that piece of wood that's kind of up in the air, and it's just a narrow little piece of wood. And these these athletes walk this balance beam maintaining their balance, doing all kinds of movements and keeping their balance as they do them. How do they do that? Well, one of the tools that they use is they, they have a focal point. They focus on a point. And as they look at this point and they focus on that point, it allows them to stay in balance. Well, that's an easy lesson for us we too need to have a focal point. We need to have a place, something that we focus on that allows us to keep our sure-footedness when we start wobbling, when we start feeling like, oh, I'm drifting into negativity or I'm starting to feel unwell. We need to remember and return to that focal point between feeling rooted in the divine and keeping our focus on the presence of God in, around, and through us, we're absolutely gonna be able to keep our balance in a much, much better way, a much easier way. <clears throat> I think that what our society has done as a, as a whole is, is that we've, we've somehow started um, equating opposites um, with conflict. You know, things are, are 
it's an either or situation. It's either black or white. It's either good or bad. It's either high or low. It's either um, hot or cold. Everything is an either or. It's either happy or sad. And so when we, when we approach life in this way, why wouldn't life just feel like a constant battle? I'm fighting one against the other. Struggling is another word, struggling one against the other. But if you will, I'd like you to just imagine an imaginary line in your head. Just see this imaginary line. And at one end, we have right, what's right and what's good. And at the other end, what we have is what's wrong and what's bad. Now, ideally, our balance point would be right in the middle of these two ends, right? That's where we want to be. We want to be balanced between these two. That's a good place to be. But what we find is, is that life is not static and life does not change, stay, stay, stay the same. Life is constantly changing. And so when we think about it, our ideas of right and wrong, of good and bad, are always changing, aren't they? Uh, what, what you thought was right and wrong and good and bad 10 years ago are probably not the same as they are now. Um, what came to mind for me was, this is an interesting one, but it, it's, a, it, it's something that we know is true. And that is that just a very few years ago, marijuana was illegal. It was, I mean, people were, went to jail for years be, for possessing marijuana. Now, and it was very bad. And now we have stores where you can go and get products that have marijuana in them. This is a shift in, in our society in terms of how we view good and bad and right and wrong. Now that line is still there, but what has happened is the line between good and bad and right and wrong has started to get smaller and smaller. Our focal point is still the same. It's still in the middle, but you can see that that line it, it, around specific uh, circumstances like this one is about marijuana, that line around good and bad and right and wrong with marijuana is very short now. Because, because we've, we've changed, we've, we've changed our ideas. We've started to add some good with the bad and some right with the wrong and that line is shorter. And isn't this how we want to live? I mean, truly when you think about growing spiritually and evolving spiritually, our goal is really to come to a place where when we look at our opposites, when we're struggling with opposites, we're able to come to a place where that line between the difference between the good and the bad, the high and the low, whatever you want to call it, begins to get shorter and shorter. And we begin to feel like maybe eventually we can get rid of the line altogether. We don't need to have to struggle with this. Somehow our goal is to see if we can find a way in our hearts and in our minds, because we can say that one thing, but we have to be able to integrate it and believe it. Find a way to soften the relationship between these opposites. I came across another story uh, that maybe will help us with this. And it's, it's a story that was told uh, by a man by the name of Anthony Lawler. And he tells a story about a Japanese tea master. And this Japanese tea master built a tea house on the side of the hill that overlooked this beautiful panoramic view of the ocean. Well, this was a tea house. And so for his inaugural tea ceremony, he invited three people to come to the tea house. 
Well, everyone had heard about the tea house and, and these three people were, felt so lucky to be invited um, for the tea ceremony. And they were so anxious to see the structure that had been built incorporating this incredible panoramic view of the, of the sea. They, were, they, they could hardly wait. Well, when they got to the tea house and they walked through the gate, they were <laughs> flabbergasted because the, the, the master, the tea master had planted trees all inside the grounds of the tea house. They were so disappointed. The view of the ocean was completely blocked. They could, they could not see the ocean at all. And they thought, oh, why, why did the tea master ruin this by, by planting all of these trees? They, they said nothing, but this is their thoughts. As part of the, the traditional ceremony, anyone who participates needs to uh, part, uh, experience and, and, and participate in, in the cleansing ceremony, you know, where they where they cleanse their hands and they cleanse their mouths before they, they come into the, the building. And so the, the three people went to the gate and they stood by the stone uh, well and they dip, bent over, they bent over and they dipped their ladle in, in the waters and they looked up and there between the branches of the trees was this opening. It opened out to the most beautiful, spectacular view of the ocean, right where they are. Now, notice that they were bending over from a place of deep humility. And in looking up, they were able to see what before was hidden. What they discovered was that perhaps they were a little hasty in, in judging the tea master and the trees and the sea because what the master had done was he had created the perfect example of harmony between the trees and the sea. It was there all the time, but the people were so busy judging, they were unable to see the harmony that was right there before them. I think that this is, this is how we move and how we operate so many times. And it's important for us to remember that I'm talking about opposites this morning, but opposites are not a divine idea, okay? God knows nothing about high or low, good or bad, uh, you know, happy, sad. Opposites are a completely human creation. Opposites are born from our own judgments. And we can see that when we look at the story here, because those three people were very much into judging that what the master had done was wrong only to discover that not only what he had he done, what, not only was what he had done right, it was perfect, it was beautiful, it was amazing. Wayne Dyer says this, has it ever occurred to you that beauty depends on something being ugly? Therefore the idea of beauty produces the idea of ugliness and vice versa. Just think how many concepts in this duality belief system depend on opposites. A person isn't tall unless there's a belief system that includes short. Our idea of life couldn't exist with that of death. Day is the opposite of night and male is the antithesis of female. So my question is, what would happen if we were able to take these pairs of opposites and come to understand that they both of them are part of the wholeness and the oneness of all things. You know, enlightened people and people with enlightened minds are able to do this. They are able to take duality 
and live a unified life. They don't worry about opposites. It's not part of how they experience life. So isn't this how we want to be? I mean, if our judgments are all about creating opposites, what if we could find a way to live with what, what does he call this? He calls it, Wayne Dyer calls it, live with a paradoxical unity where all things exist simultaneously and everything is as it is. And everything I won't say is right, but I'll use that word because I don't have another word to, to describe it, but everything is as it is. And so it is not judging it one way or the other. Shakespeare said, nothing is either good or bad, but thinking makes it so. And this is what we do. And so I'm calling us today to see if we can find a way where we can hone our skills, where we can find a way to, first of all, notice that we are dealing in a world of duality and that we're dancing through our opposites day in and day out and see if we can find a way where we can learn to live in harmony. Is there a way where we can have good and bad living together in harmony, together in harmony? Can we find a way where joy and sorrow somehow can coexist? A way that fear and faith can, can be and live in peace together? This this is our opportunity because in this teaching, we use our minds. We use our minds. This is, this is the science of mind. Let's use our minds to create a, a, a life for ourselves that is free from as much inner conflict as we can possibly make it. And one of the ways we can do this is to learn to play with these opposites that are, are ongoing as part of our daily experience. The Taoist teachings uh, provide a beautiful way of looking at harmonizing the opposites. And here, here's how it goes. Having and not having produce one another. Difficult and easy balance each other. Long and short, complete each other. High and low, rely on each other. Pitch and tone make harmony together. Beginning and ending follow each other. So today is a new way to look at our dance of life. Today, we can learn to see that everything is part of everything else. It is truly the yin and yang uh, of life itself, you know, where the, there's a, the, white the white half circle with the black dot in it and the black circle with the white dot in it. That within everything that we deem as bad, there is good. And with everything that we feel is wrong, there is something right. So this is how we're going to begin to shift our thinking for the month. And so here's some, some simple ways to practice harmony. And we've, I've talked about them this morning. Number one, first and foremost, if we want to be in harmony, just stop where we are and align ourselves with the presence of the divine right where we are. There is no duality. There is no way to be out of harmony if you are in alignment with the divine. It is all one. It is right where we are. And if we start to feel like we're getting wobbly, then we need to do what the, the little gymnasts do and, and return our focus, our focal point. And our focal point is always on our center, our center of being right where we are. Again, where the divine dwells within us. And then when we start noticing that we're <clears throat> moving into, into those dualities, which we will, it's, it's human nature. If we can identify 
what pair of opposites we're dealing with, we can take a moment, and this isn't like finding the good, you know, in any given situation. This is different. This is specific. This is identifying the pair of opposites and seeing if we can find a way to, to melt those two opposites together in, in some way. So if you if you're feeling or judging something to be bad, see if you can find a piece of good in it. If you see something that you've identified as being cruel, cruel, see if you can find somewhere in there some spark of kindness. If we, if we think that something is just absolutely foolish, crazy, stupid, whatever words that we use, which are usually not very kind, see if we can find something in that that is intelligent and wise. Can you feel how that, that would shift how we're viewing that, that negative opposite that we're looking, looking at? And then the other thing to do is to just take advantage of life itself and find as many ways as you can to experience harmony in your life. Listen to music. You know, harmony, when you hear harmony, how it creates that vibration in your body. Listen to music that creates that beautiful vibration. Hum. Just hum. Practice humming. When you hum, you create your own vibration. It's lovely. Go outside and listen to the harmony of nature, the wind in the trees. The sound of running water has its own form of harmony. So this is, this is your challenge. This is your chore. This is your task for the month. This is the first week. And our, the invitation is to spend as much time as you can developing your, your skills of harmony, your ability to be able to deal with paradoxes, to find a way to see how to blend things that seem to be unblendable. And yet there is a part of both in both. So during this month, I invite you, if you're starting to feel strange, you're starting to feel separate, you're starting to feel like there's nothing holding you, remember that you are rooted in the divine. You are held in the divine. You are anchored in the divine. And if you really need something to feel better about, stop where you are. And if you're like me, I'm gonna do this when no one else is around, but just hum a tune. And let's hum through this month together. It's all about harmony. Namaste. about
you'll do compared to what you won't. Think about those you love, peace with those you don't. Think about where you go, remember where you've been. Simplify your life by keeping. Thank you, guys. Thank you. And it was wonderful this morning. <clears throat> um, thank you, Reverend Terry, for that, that talk. That was exactly what we all, <clears throat> I think, needed to hear as we enter into a month of harmony. Thank you to the musicians, especially thank you to Jimmy, um, our music director, and, uh, and to all of the musicians that uh, so beautifully support our community. We're so blessed. I do have a, a couple of announcements that I need to make. Uh, remember that prayer requests are always welcome, um, that we're a community that believes very strongly in the power of prayer to heal. And if there's anything that's in your life that requires healing, please don't hesitate to ask for healing. It's very simple. You, <coughs> you simply send an email. <laughs> Well, excuse me, send an email to awakeningways at the grid.net. And in the subject line, you put in prayer request. And then make sure that it's somewhere in there, you, you know, after you tell us what it is you need prayer for, you sign your name so we know exactly who we're praying for. And remember that if you're do, asking for prayer for others, that you make sure they're willing to be prayed for before you ask us to pray for them. Um, as always, I want to remind everybody that we survive, um, that this community survives, that this community is here and able to, to bring these messages to you, these heart opening messages to you because of your love and your love offerings. And we appreciate your help. You have been so wonderful in supporting us up until now. And, and we know that you're going to continue to do that. If you'd like to, to tithe to us and you haven't been able to do it so far, you can mail us a check to our mailing address, which is 7350 El Camino Real, Suite 101, Atascadero 93422. Or you can go to the website. And there are numerous pages on the website that have a PayPal button on it. Um, the one that comes to mind immediately is if you go, when you go to the website, click on the Awakening Ways uh, button at the, uh, in the menu bar, and it will open to a page explaining who we are at the bottom. It has a PayPal button. Um, so 
there are many ways you can you can you can do this. Many of us uh, have automatic deductions from our bank accounts. There are other ways to to do it as well. We appreciate your tithes. We appreciate your support. We love you for all that you have done to support us as we've gone through this. Finally, I want to remind you to keep pulling those affirmations from your affirmation jar and keep looking at the reading them every day. And, um, and, and this Caesar's Fund for Nonviolence continues too until the 4th of April. <laughs> So even on those days when there's nothing going on, there is always something you can turn to that will help to reinforce your connection to our wonderful community. With that, I wanna do a quick benediction, closing prayer. Ah, we have been so blessed this day to be in the presence of spirit as we are every day, but only when we remember and we maintain our awareness of spirit, can we truly feel its presence in our lives and truly reap the benefits. I know for each of us this coming week that we are truly in the presence of spirit, truly reaping those benefits, raising us to a higher level of consciousness healing and blessing our lives and the lives of every human being around us. When the world seems to be falling apart, that's our time to rise in spirit and heal and bless. Mm. Rising in love, rising in spirit, that is our destiny. We are so blessed. I give thanks for that. And knowing that as we go through this week, we are constantly reminded of Reverend Terry's words about harmony. And we remain in balance, like the gymnast keeping our eyes focused on that place before us, that place of the divine. And I know that this week is a wonderful week, a week full of abundance and love, full of grace and healing, full of all of the good things of life for each of us. We are so blessed. And so it is. Amen. <laughs>